You know, my kids, what I learned is they give me different types of hugs, especially the boys. When they got a little older, they stopped hugging me full force. You know what I'm talking about? They got too cool for school. So I come home from a trip and I'd say, come on, give your dad a hug. And they'd be like, uh, uh, okay. I call it a fish hug. And whenever they do that, I grab them by the shoulders and I bring them in and I'm kind of, come here, 16 year old. I hug them as hard as I can. I don't let them go and I kiss them on the cheek. And on the outside, they're like, ugh, I hate this. On the inner side, they're like, I need this so much. It's a scary world out there. And I just hug them, hug them. But my daughter, Maddie, she's always just been a hugger. As soon as she can walk, she's a hugger, 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 hugger. And so there's something so wonderful, especially if you've been gone for a long trip, like I used to travel a lot, and I would come in the parking and uh, the driveway, and I could tell she was already making her way, and I would open the door, and she would throw herself around me and just hug me so tight, and be like, Daddy, I'm so glad you're here. And still this day, she comes up to me, and she just kind of stands me with this posture of like, I hope I'm not interrupting, but I'm going to give you a hug right now. And she just, she'll just jump in your arms, which is really hard on your lower back. She's 21 now. Uh, but... <laughs> I love, there's something so wonderful about a hug given freely and fully. What does God want from you? What does this passage ultimately teach us? It teaches us this, that God is waiting for that moment where you walk right up to him and you fully say, I believe, and you wrap your arms around the God who died for you and say, thank you for healing me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for making me and remaking me. And you embrace the God who loves you. That's what God wants. That's what God wants.